38 minutes past the hour. The Sunrise Morning Show continues. I'm Matt Swaim, joined now by Bishop Elias Zayden, Maronite Catholic Eparchy of Our Lady of Lebanon of Los Angeles is where he presides. Bishop, good morning. Good morning. So we've been following so much of what's been happening in Lebanon, especially in regard to the explosion. But before that, uh, all the concerns for religious liberty in the country of Lebanon. Uh, what's the bishop, uh, the, the eparch, calling us to in this present moment? Uh, first, thank you for uh, hosting us this morning. Uh, Lebanon is going through a difficult time. Just for people who don't know where Lebanon is, first, Lebanon is in the Middle East, close to Israel. You know, it's part of the Holy Land. Jesus visited Lebanon actually a couple of times as one. Anytime he wanted to have a private time, he would come to Lebanon. He did a couple of miracles there. And what's going Lebanon? Lebanon is it's a good message, you know, between the Christians and Muslims. In fact, they had... Uh, the late Pope St. John Paul II described Lebanon as more than a country is a message to the East and the West, and also a message of conviviality between Muslim and the Christian. Why, per se, there is a right to, for the Christian to, to worship freely. However, with the whole politics, political situation, economical situation, it's putting a lot of pressure on the Christian and other free people who becomes now the whole country becomes, if I want to use the term, somewhat hijacked by Hezbollah or other militias as well. Because, uh, and and this, the final explosion in Beirut showed that as well, it's becoming difficult uh, and created a lot of damages. That's why the patriarch, uh, our uh, patriarch is beatific and eminent, uh, Bishar Abu Tashrai, was calling for kind of neutralizing Lebanon, become Lebanon announcing them as a neutral country. We don't need to be part of any what we call partisanship here and there and make sure that everybody has the right to live and worship and express their opinion and become a, a prosperous country at all levels in that perspective. And, of course, we've been talking a lot about you know how Lebanon is just so unique in that part of the world because of the way that it was set apart uh, in many ways for Christians to be able to worship freely. But also, I mean, here in the United States, we're preparing for elections. And, you know, as chaotic as it gets here, they're going to be, you know, a peaceful transition to power. Uh, in Lebanon, their whole government just resigned. I mean, what are the people going through when that kind of thing happens? Uh, in Lebanon, it's kind of the parliament. The people only vote for the members of parliament. And every four years, supposedly, but sometimes they extend the mandate from, you know, and when the prime minister or, you know, ministers, the secretaries uh, resign, the president technically has to do also what we call has a polling of among the, and you know, uh, among the members of parliament to see who they're going to name as a prime minister. And that one will have the task to form a cabinet. And it should be half Christian, half Muslim, you know, always the case. And uh, But since their resignation, and that is almost everything done, has pushing that even polling, but, you know, kind of little bit, uh, technically has, you should call right away to ask for their opinion to name a prime minister. But unless what we call the whole body in agreement before, he's not going to do that. And this uh, kind of little bit uh, sad because it's been repeated uh, after every cabinet resign and will have the same plan. And this is because the government is corrupt and they want to make sure they keep, they stay in power. The demonstration has been around for people who have been really asking for basic things. And the government is somewhere in different place. And, and this is, I think, what's upsetting many people and many, uh, the general population of people. Some people are happy because they keep the status quo, because they're benefiting from it as well. Well, one of those basic things that people are asking for is, um, well, just the kind of oversight over explosives. I mean, the fact that, that much ammonium nitrate was left in a warehouse in the middle of a port is 
and was there for years is shocking. Uh, and apparently, um, you know, according to the patriarch, uh, this is not that's not the only place where volatile things are being stored or warehoused in the country of Lebanon. In fact, he said it uh, this last Sunday in his homily and everything, because he does homily, but also states and people look the situation a little bit different from me. He has to make a statement in some way talking about the situation. And he put, like, like ringing the bell, if I want to use the term, warning them, wait a minute, this is what happened in Beirut. God knows what they have, because whenever you have militias, you don't have the official government, you don't know what's going on. And that's why he's asking, please do, because we cannot risk and put people's life at risk just to fulfill the agenda of one group or another. We have to think about the whole country and the whole people. And we need to make sure we will provide them with, with a sense of stability and peace in and, and every way. And he's been really, a, uh, I hope he's not a voice in the desert, but at, at this time he's that voice crying out, please be careful, open your eyes, do what's proper, and remove all those arms and explosives so that citizens can feel safe, at least inside their homes, he said it this last Sunday. But unfortunately, saw, as I said, yeah. politicians are doing business as usual, and the situation is not as usual. And we see that when those arms uh, get used, it's very often on non-combatants, it's on civilians, it's on uh, children, and it's it's awful. Um, but you know, I know what a lot of our listeners are wondering, Bishop Zidan. You know, what can we do here in the United States? I mean, is there anything that we can do? You know, first we live in a democratic country. You know, we and this year is the election year, and our voice could make a difference. I want to appeal. You know, in defense of Christian, also put something to kind of a bill, and it was sponsored by two senators, James Rich from Indiana uh, Republican, Bob Menendez from New Jersey Democrat. It's bipartisan, kind of expressing their support and uh, standing with Lebanon and everything, and also recognizing the devastating explosion that was reported in Beirut and caused a lot of damage. For example, to keep reminding senators and Congress to support Lebanon, Lebanon needs a lot of help. This is first what we call, let's support it economically only, that's important, but also support politically as well. We need to get what we call, Peter said it in a month or something, two months ago, we need to free the government from any agenda that is not Lebanese. And often those are foreign agendas. We need to make sure that we have a government that stands for what's right, for what's just, for sovereignty. And I think this would help. The second thing, uh, since the explosion, uh, David Head, the Undersecretary of, uh, you know, Secretary of State, went to Lebanon. He, he voices of, you know, support to Lebanon, but he said the government cannot be going with corruption. John Barr is the acting director of USAID, and went and the United States offered $17 million so far in addition to other things. But Lebanon needs a lot of help. Whatever people could, from that point, if the government can do, would be great. But also what we can do, maybe we could do $10, $15, or whatever to help. Families are in dear need there. People lost their homes, their livelihoods, their businesses. Uh, hospitals were destroyed. The schools were destroyed. Uh, churches were destroyed in that bombing. And everything needs, needs help and support. But if you cannot do any of those, at least pray. Pray and let your brothers and sisters there know that really uh, there are some people there to be able to stand. For the resolution to make it easy for you, if you go to the uh, IDC and in Defense of Christian website, there is a take action information, and you just quickly, it takes just one, two minutes, you can do and send to your uh, congressman, to your senate, uh, as a kind of support to help the Lebanon at this time. 
Well, and we've got In Defense of Christians linked at sunrisemorningshow.com. And our listeners uh, are very generous people. And also we we remind them constantly that Lebanon is one of the places where the church has been the longest. Uh, it was there a lot longer than it, <laughs> than it has been here in the United States of America. Bishop Elias Zaiden, thank you so much for being with us. And uh, we will keep you and the nation of Lebanon in our prayers. Thank you. God bless. All right. It is.